So the subject of night 10.2 is this is getting into much more detail of this potential energy idea with gravitation rather than springs being your main example. So here's a picture of the earth and a little book. Here's a little book. Maybe it's 10 feet off the surface of the earth. Obviously this is not drawn to scale. The surface of the earth, if this was the scale of the book, would be far huger. You can see this is kind of like the situation I set up when I was describing the overview in 10.1. Here's a small mass object, and here's a large mass object. And you know that the force down on this book, m book times g in the downward direction, thanks to Newton's third law, must be equal and opposite to the force up on the Earth. That is, however gravity works, whatever is pulling the book down is also pulling the Earth up. So there's an m book g in the downward direction on the book. There is also an m book g in the upward direction on the earth. So the book and the earth are analogous to the situation of the big mass and the small mass acting through a spring. The big mass hardly moves at all. And in this case, the earth moves an utterly negligible amount. So you can calculate the work done on the book and the work done on the earth as these two fall towards each other. And because the earth moves hardly at all, the work done on the earth, which is this force dotted into delta R of the earth, is utterly negligible compared to the work done on the book, which is this force dotted into delta R of the book. So let's focus, since all the work seems to be, and all the kinetic energy seems to be being built up here on the book, even though this is our complete system, let's focus on the change in kinetic energy of the book. Here's the free body diagram for the book. It's pretty darn simple. It has one force in the downward direction, if that's the only thing going on. So there's the vector, and its magnitude is m book g, and it's in the downward direction. We have other ways of writing that. We could say Fg, the force of gravity on the book, is equal to minus m book g j hat. Um, or we could say the force of gravity's y component is equal to minus m book g. Those are all equal good ways of saying that. And now, if this we call this the y-axis here, this would be the x-axis, and the book is only moving up and down, we can calculate the work. We have a y-initial, which is whatever the height of the book was initially, and we have a y-final, which is whatever the height of the book was finally, and we have a delta r for the book, which is equal to y final minus y initial times j hat. So you put this formula and this formula together. The work on the book is fg dot delta r of the book. So there's a nice expression for the force of gravity and there's a nice expression for the motion of the book. Uh, to find the work done by gravity on the book, we take Fg dot delta R and J hat dot J hat is 1. So we get minus M book G from here. And we get my Y final minus Y initial from the delta R. So there's your answer. The work done on the book is minus M book G Y final minus Y initial. So just like in the case of the spring, it would be nice if this uh, change in kinetic energy of the book could be attributed to being stored somewhere. In the case of the spring, we attribute it to being stored in the spring, and then the spring launched that smaller mass away and gave it some kinetic energy. Here, there's no spring that's visible between the Earth and this book. But there is something that we're going to start imagining exists that we call the gravitational field. Now you can't see the gravitational field, and you certainly can't see the energy in the gravitational field. 
So this is a leap of faith to say that the work done on the book, which creates some kinetic energy in the book, maybe came from some mysterious place, which is the energy stored in the gravitational field. So for Tao, think of it as a hypothesis, and we'll try to figure out where this hypothesis leads us. So, work done on the book was this, changing the kinetic energy of the book is this. We're going to say that there's something called the potential energy in the gravitational field, U, and we're going to say that this potential energy had a final value, and this potential energy had an initial value, okay, and that we have a change in the potential energy, which is its final value minus initial value. Whatever energy is withdrawn from this is whatever energy was given to the book. To be a little more precise, the change in the potential of, of, of the field is equal to minus the work done by the field. Now let's plug in for our specific case here. We already had that the work done by the field was minus m book g y final minus y initial. The minus signs cancel when I plug that into the work done by the field. And so now I have m book g y final minus y initial. Which I can rewrite as m book g y final minus M book G Y initial. Now you can see a sort of uh, rather obvious identification to make that if this was the change in the energy in the field, and we just calculated it, and the change in the energy of the field is U final minus U initial, well, now we have that a fairly obvious identification that U final is M book G Y final, and U initial is m book g y initial. And this is the origin of a formula that you'll see a lot, which is the energy, the gravitational potential energy of having a book at a certain height is uh, m g y, where y is that height, g is the 9.8 meters per second square, and m is the mass of the book or anything else that you're considering. Now that's already a lot, and I have derived night number 10.9, which is the most important formula to understand the derivation of in chapter 10, section 10.2. But there's still four more topics to go in section 10.2. I think you're in a good position to read the next topic, which is the zero of potential energy. And then, in class, probably on Friday, we'll do energy bar charts. And then, in the next flipped lecture, which won't be applicable until the Wednesday of midterm week, I'm going to get into this digging deeper into gravitational potential energy part of this section, which begins on page 237. And then he culminates the chapter by adding friction to the gravitational potential energy, and maybe we'll do an example like that, where there's not only the potential energy of gravity, but there's energy being dissipated via friction. So that's the end of Flipped Lecture 24. Bye.